we're in Cromer, Australia's testing laboratory in far north Queensland. And when I'm working here, I'm doing two things. I'm making jars of experimental paint like these, and I have to spend quite a lot of time painting with them because uh, if I'm not working with the paint, I really am not able to find out what it does. And here I have something which I think is rather earth-shattering as far as acrylic paints are concerned because we've had 40-odd years of acrylic paint, artists' acrylic paint, since the 1960s. And to me, there's always been a very serious problem, which is the short time frame that you have to work with. Oil painters have got the tremendous advantage of being able to work all day on their painting. And that's a huge advantage because the whole of Western art is really working around the blending of colours and tones. And so if you have a full day in which to consider what you're doing and alter it, sit down and think about it, come back and do something else to it, then you have a huge advantage over the poor old acrylic painter who's locked into his little time grabs. What we have here is an example of a new acrylic artist's paint which we're going to call Atelier Interactive and we've chosen the word interactive because it describes what the paint does. It works with you instead of against you. I want to show you how this actually works by removing part of this glaze. And I need to probably explain how the painting was made in the first place was made yesterday afternoon and underneath these tree shapes are blobs of gold mica paint and they've been glazed over with a, a, a transparent green-black glaze which I wouldn't have dared to use with ordinary acrylic paint because you don't have time to modulate it. All these modulations of shape have been done by applying paint and then wiping it with a rag to bring some of the colour back out again. And so I've had the full day, or the full afternoon is what it actually took me, in which to uh, eventually mould this into some, some kind of a form. Whereas uh, with an ordinary acrylic paint I just simply couldn't have undertaken it. I now want to show you what happens if I feel dissatisfied with something, I can still remove it. It's glaringly too bright. You would see a tonal jump there and I'm going to have to paint that back in again obviously because it's too bright. What I'm, I'm going to do now is, is actually carry out the repair job. I'm going to reglaze that area. You don't really need a beautiful sable brush to do it either, in my opinion. It's more a matter of pulling out than putting in very often. So that pretty nearly does it, I think. The, you simply could not do that with a normal acrylic artist's paint. Have that degree of control where you can work with it continuously for a full day if you want to. I've only worked half a day on this and you can come back to it the next day and make minor adjustments if you want to, if you're dissatisfied with something. I wanted to show you this painting because it's the largest one that I've produced in this uh, a series of experiments. I wanted to be sure that I could paint on a large scale without having the interruption of the paint drying when I didn't want it to. 
Now, this painting took me several painting sessions over a period of two or three days and uh, it kind of proves the point that scale isn't a problem with this paint. We suddenly find ourselves in the same territory that oil painters inhabit. They have all the time that they need to figure out what they're doing, what they have already done. They can sit in their chair and think about it, and they can come and, and make alterations, and use this wonderful implement called a paint rag, which is used to adjust things that you don't like. Whereas normally with acrylic painters, you have to actually just wait 10 minutes for the painting to dry, and you paint out what you didn't like, but you then have another painting. It's very, very hard to integrate an acrylic painting. It's much easier to, to integrate a, an oil painting because of the continuity. And for the first time, with acrylic paints, we have the same sort of continuity. I find it very hard to imagine that ordinary acrylic paints will be around much anymore once this new paint hits the street. The demonstration you've just been watching was done just over six months ago and a, a, a great deal has happened in that intervening time and I thought that uh, for artists who are interested in this paint that it was essential for me to make a reappearance and uh, uh, talk to you about what has actually eventuated because we're talking about processes nearly all the time here. At the time of doing the demonstration where I live in the tropics it was wet season. The wet season has just returned by the way. The humidity level is over 80% and that's very conducive to any kind of water-based painting process. And so I was a little bit concerned to see what would happen with interactive in uh, drier climatic conditions. So we made an expedition to the south coast of New South Wales and I can just show you on screen here some of the sketches that we did. We were working outdoors in pleasant weather conditions and we had no problems using the paint. In fact, we thought afterwards that maybe the weather conditions were too pleasant, although normally people do not go outdoors to paint with acrylics in Australia because the climate is, is dry. So we made a second expedition to a very hot dry place called Chiligo in northern inland Queensland and the temperature there was 40 degrees Celsius which is 102 on the Fahrenheit scale and the, the humidity level was way down in the low 20s and we were still able to do paintings. I just brought one to show. Maybe that gives you some feeling for the kind of dryness and heat that's going on and while you're sort of looking at that as an uncomfortable outdoor situation for painting I need to remind people who live in cold climate countries and who use winter heating that your studio is probably more arid than an arid desert would be because uh, uh, most heating systems simply rip all of the humidity out of the atmosphere, your internal uh, in-house atmosphere, and you, you end up having very unfavorable working conditions. So it's important that the paint was working okay in this situation. And it's not quite that simple because it's a process. Um, I need to explain the drying process, I think, at this stage, because 
some people have assumed that this is a slow drying acrylic paint. There is no such thing as a slow drying water based acrylic paint because the water evaporates and the paint dries. And what happens with conventional acrylic paints is that the water evaporates, the paint forms a skin and, and becomes dry very suddenly. The, the point with interactive is that it doesn't form a skin, the paint becomes gradually thicker as the water is coming out of it. You notice the, the pull on your brush, you feel a brush drag as you're trying to paint and that is your signal that you need the water spray. That's this weapon here which I will uh, use a little bit later to show you. Uh, without that you, you simply can't go on because you have to replace the water that's being lost. As long as you replace the moisture that is coming off your painting you can keep on working in a wet in wet session for as long as you feel like doing so. And so it, it's a matter of responding not to uh, a time signal, you don't have to do it every 20 minutes or whatever. You, you use the spray when you feel the need to do so and it, it has to become part and parcel of your whole painting process. So it's, um, it's something that has to become an automatic reaction while you're in the middle of your uh, whole painting uh, thing which is a process. I mean, I don't know if people seem to think of painting as a succession of techniques. I think of it as, as uh, a process into which you have to implant your techniques and if the process is going wrong you can't use the techniques. It doesn't matter what kind of paint we're talking about. And so uh, the key to this, to using this paint successfully is to replace moisture that is being lost. And so having done those two uh, outdoor experiments uh, by that time, the, the dry season, we do have a, a, a dry, low humidity season here where I live, had cut in and I was able to do studio paintings and I like to work usually for about a four hour uh, straight painting session and the same thing applies. You just uh, supply the moisture when it's required and you can keep on painting wet in wet for as long as you wish to do so. Now, I think I'll get rid of that and show you my two props. I don't want to do a demonstration, but that's a paint rag and that's a water spray. And they are rather basic looking things, as you can see, but they're absolutely essential uh, pieces of equipment if you want to paint successfully with this paint in a wet in wet um, situation. Now, the use of the paint rag will become clear to you when you look at this sequence of still shots showing the development of a painting as a wet in wet process. And you can see the, the uh, images in the painting sort of floating back and forth as I change my mind and alter things. Now, uh, those of you who've only ever used acrylic paints would be used to simply waiting 10 minutes and overpainting the parts that you don't like. In this wet in wet situation, you have to remove the, the colours that you don't want which are still wet, otherwise you end up with a mud pie. So that is what that is for. Now, I, I think I have to more or less show you what the water spray does. It's very basically simple. Point it away from the painting at first and get it spraying. Then point it towards the painting, but pull back from the surface of your painting. You don't want large particles hitting the painting. And just touch the surface of your painting after you've given it a few bursts because your fingertips will be able to feel how much moisture is there. You're just replacing lost moisture. You don't want to flood the surface. And you will have accidents if that happens. Just put your painting down on a flat surface and wait for it to dry off a bit and be more careful next time. But it doesn't require a huge amount of, of technical skill to pull 
a trigger on a water spray. And so that's the additional thing that you have to be able to do and that will open up the whole uh, world of wet in wet painting to you. It, it's a totally acrylic painting experience that you'll be having. The paint will seem just like other good quality acrylics that you may have used. It's only in the, in the, in the timing sequence during the process that you'll find the paint behaves absolutely differently provided that you keep on giving it back the water that it's losing. Now, wet in wet painting techniques are uh, really the main reason why oil painters use oil paints. I think most oil painters would say that. I use oil paints myself and uh, that would have to be the, the main enticement to use oil paint is the richness of the textures and so forth that you can get and the fact that you can keep on blending and changing your mind and altering things as much as you like and you end up with a, a more cohesive painting than you would normally get using acrylics which dry so quickly that you can't complete your thought process properly or I have found that to be the case and so in the past when I've been using uh, uh, acrylic paints as we've been used to using them when they dry quickly I've tended to do a rough acrylic painting and then switch over to oil paints to do the more nuanced things to to get a completed painting because uh, I really was not able to do blending techniques in fast drying paint. Now that I have this new paint I find that I'm able to complete those finishing sequences in interactive by using the water spray as, as I need to. It gives me the, the time that is required for my brain to function properly to figure out what I'm going to do next and make the amendments and alterations that I want to do and sit in my chair and consider the painting and all of those things that uh, an artist wants to do apart from the straight out process of applying paint to the painting without much thought. So basically what you have is a, a whole set of opportunities which you previously did not have with fast drying acrylics but you do also still have the fast drying techniques at your beck and call where you may feel like using them. So you really have the best of two worlds here and uh, if you're used to oil painting I think you'll find the, the, the blending techniques will come fairly easily to you. If you haven't been used to having time to sink and blend your paints and make alterations wet in wet, then the whole experience of painting wet in wet will have to come gradually as you learn how to handle the paint in that wet in wet condition. So the other very most essential thing for you to look at on this CD is the uh, written text which you can download which will give you the complete um, basic information that we've learned over this six month period about how to actually get the best out of this paint in, in different climatic conditions and so on.